There's no way to sugarcoat it. The Emoji Movie is terrible, and the people who made it should feel ashamed of themselves. As the reviews rolled in over the course of the film's release, it became clear that Sony Pictures had unwittingly crafted something truly repugnant. And it's hard to remember a time in recent memory when a big-budget animated movie has been viewed as so universally loathsome. Everybody everywhere seems to be in agreement. This movie is bad. But did it have to be? Is a movie about emojis living in a world inside your smartphone such an inherently stupid premise that it was doomed from the start? And what is it about this film that's exactly so repellent to people? Before I saw it, I wanted to give it a fair shake, because 2014's The Lego Movie succeeded in changing my perception of what could and couldn't be adapted into a film. When you think about it, these two movies have a lot of interesting parallels between them. They both capitalize on brand name recognition, they were both fueled by a corporate think tank's ambition for monetary gain, and they both lend themselves to becoming movies equally well. Which is to say, they equally don't. Neither of them have the benefit of some form of narrative that can be worked into a plot like you get when you're adapting a book or a play or a comic. Heck, they don't even really have established characters. Just simple humanoid archetypes. Two dots and a line that our collective unconscious recognizes as a face. But the disadvantage that the Emoji Movie had, that the Lego Movie didn't, was technology fatigue. Which becomes more and more prevalent in humans as technology advances and becomes more and more a part of our lives. When you've spent as much time staring at a screen all day as I have, you start to hate staring at a screen all day. The notion that man was not meant to spend his life piddling away in front of a tiny glowing rectangle that distracts us from our beautiful natural world is an ideal that many of us share. And the fear that man's over-reliance on technology is leading us to a bleak, undesirable future is nothing new. Technology makes our lives easier, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's making us happier. What does this have to do with the Emoji Movie? Well, the creepy thing about the Emoji Movie is it seems to be based in the abhorrent, unsettling celebration of the things about modern technology that we don't like. Spotify, Candy Crush, Twitter, and even smartphones themselves. These things are synonymous with technology fatigue, and we've come to associate them with mankind's relationship with technology becoming more and more unhealthy. And yet the film ghoulishly wears these things as badges of honor for some reason. Why? Because Sony Pictures Animation has mistaken popular culture for beloved culture. Making a movie about popular culture that isn't beloved makes about as much sense as some Hollywood bigwig saying, hey, our research says that a lot of people are buying car insurance these days. Maybe we should make an animated movie about car insurance? Quick, get Flo on the horn! The oversaturation of brand name recognition in modern culture doesn't make us like brands more. If anything, it makes us like them less. The powers that be behind the Emoji Movie, in their hubris, failed to realize this. What conclusion can we glean? Well, I guess if you're gonna hinge the entire appeal of your film on brand name recognition, you better at least make damn well sure it's a brand that everybody likes. Like Legos. In stark contrast, Legos are the opposite of technology fatigue because Legos are the opposite of technology. They're analog. And even though I'm not the kind of guy who gets off on viewing things through the rose-tinted glasses of... Nostalgia. Ugh. Even I have to admit that the cool thing about Legos is that they can remind cold, cynical adults like myself about a time in our lives when we didn't have to look at screens all day. Man, screens suck. Oh, sorry, Burnbot. Present company excluded, of course. So did the Emoji Movie have to be bad? Well, think about the things we've discussed. Namely, technology fatigue and the oversaturation of brands in modern society. Now, if the people who made the Emoji Movie knew what they were doing, they would have used these subjects as themes in their film. Kinda like how creativity was a theme in the Lego Movie. Which is apropos for a movie about Legos, because Legos are a toy that is used... to create. There are a lot of bad reviews for the Emoji Movie out there, each more scathing than the last. Harsh tongues lashing in competition with each other, trying to prove who can be the most nasty with their biting condemnation. And having seen the Emoji Movie myself... twice... I can't say the film doesn't deserve it. It's bad. But all of these reviews are destructive, none of them are constructive. And you know what? 
I believe that if you want to be a movie reviewer, if you want to behave as if you have any semblance of authority on the subject of film, you have to be able to speak about even the most repugnant, unsalvageable movie in a constructive way. Because unless you have the wherewithal to prove that given the opportunity, you could have done better, then you're no authority on anything and your opinion is worthless. That being said, I'll leave you with this. I'd like to think that somewhere out in some alternate dimension, amidst the unending cosmic particles of reality, there's a version of the Emoji Movie that's actually pretty good. This version still has Alex, it still has his phone, and it still has the Emoji people who live inside it in a tiny world. But in this version, Alex is kind of a bitchy little butt wipe. He's rude to his parents, he disrespects his teachers, and he's just wasting his adolescence in front of his phone. Maybe his grades start slipping, and maybe his relationship with his folks becomes more and more pugnacious. But instead of dealing with these things, he just looks at his phone, because it provides an escape for him. But Alex's parents and teachers aren't the only victims of his proverbial angst. You see, hidden behind his facade of ambivalence and his own bitter hormones, Alex is unhappy. He's really unhappy. And he doesn't know why. Not because he's a bad person or because he did something wrong, but just because he's not old enough to understand his own emotions yet. The emojis living in his phone, moved by their owner's plight, decide to take action. And they embark on an epic quest, as cute squishy characters often do in these animated films. And the purpose of this quest is to somehow find a way to send Alex a message. And that message is that he should put down his stupid phone for five minutes, stop using it as a means to distract himself from his problems, and talk to his parents with words, like a person, and not with tiny little pictures of yellow smiley faces. <sighs> what a concept. <laughs> I'm Max G, this was my brain dump of the whatever, and I hope you hated it. Honk off, you dastardly duty basket! Come on, pick up! Pick up! Come on, I need a ride! <laughs>